Hey everyone, Kylie Brownfield here, clinical psychologist from the Mindful Clinic. Um, I wanted to jump on and um, talk a little bit about um, something that I've been hearing a lot about recently, um, and that's parents that or, or educators that are concerned when children aren't listening or apparently not listening. Um, so I just want to share a little story with you and um, just want to sort of tap into the nervous system a little bit and explain some of the brain body connection so that hopefully you can understand a little bit more when you think that your child isn't listening to you. So um, start off, this is the Batmobile. Okay, this thing is adored by my son. He's three and a half. Um, this was a hand-me-down toy and I made the mistake, unfortunately, of letting him take it to daycare one day. Um, so he wouldn't let go of it and I didn't want it to be a drama or a power struggle, so I let him take it in the car. And unfortunately, he wanted to take it in um, to show his friends. Um, anyway, by the end of the day, when I went and picked him up, um, the educator said to him, tell mummy what happened with the Batmobile. And I thought, oh gosh, what, what's happened? Um, and it transpired that there was some point where they had to, to pack up everything. And apparently my son wasn't listening. Um, and the educator said to him, the Batmobile goes in the bin if you don't listen. And so his beautiful, his beautiful Batmobile, which he calls the Batmobile, um, ended up temporarily going in the bin. Obviously she had to follow through um, with the consequence. Um, and yes, he was not happy about this. Um, so I, I'm not meaning any judgment or offense against the educator because we all say these things in, in all sorts of moments of stress. Um, but I just wanted to explain a little bit about what could actually be happen happening for your child and for their body when they're seeming like they're not listening to you. And what can happen is um, you, they might be engaged in play or something might, might happen and you ask them something or you instruct them to do something and they just completely blank you, almost looking like they're not even registering what you're saying. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about um, the inner ear muscles. I know it sounds very random, but um, we have a muscle in the very middle of our ear called the stapedius muscle. And when we are feeling, um, when we're feeling very um, calm and socially engaged, this muscle, muscle actually contracts. And what happens is that that means that um, voice, voice can actually come in and, and we will hear other people's voices because we're feeling very um, socially engaged. Um, and when the body is feeling um, very under threat or, or your nervous system is kind of rising a little bit in the fight flight, what happens is the stapedius muscle actually um, relaxes a little bit so that we can tune into the background noise. So if kids are in a noisy classroom or they're at daycare or there's something that they're feeling like is a little bit threatening for them, um, then they might be in fight flight mode. Um, it doesn't even take much for this to happen. And that just means that the stapedius muscle relaxes and it tunes into the background noise. So they might hear footsteps in the corridor or they might hear the crashing of, um, you know, chairs as people are um, kind of packing up and that sort of thing. And that can even feel overwhelming. And so, so the very sound of somebody's voice actually kind of gets tuned out. So it's a survival mechanism. And it's, um, um, we know that, that this kind of, thing um, has, well, this mechanism, survival mechanism has evolved over time. Um, unfortunately, it means now that the child isn't actually under threat when they're in the classroom and there's lots of background noise, but it, it, it does make a difference when we're trying to give them verbal instructions. Um, so in the case where you might say something to a child and it seems like he or she literally doesn't hear you, that could be the case. So it means that they're not unwilling to listen, but maybe it means that they can't actually hear you. Um, so this can, um, we can, we can sort this out by just kind of helping them get their body back into a calm alert state. So, um, back into this ventral vagus, um, area we call it and, and basically look into their eyes, um, connect with them, listen to them, help get their body really calm. 
basically connect and then redirect. So you want to give them an instruction and you want them to be able to hear you. Try and think about what's going on for their bodies. Are they in a calm state or are they kind of feeling a little bit under threat and, and they might blank you. Um, so connect before you redirect or instruct. This is particularly the case um, for kids that have um, overactive threat threat detection systems. So potentially a child that has um, um, sensory processing issues or a child um, with autism or ADHD and they're always kind of looking out for dangers. Um, not always, a lot of the time. Um, so it might seem like you're getting completely blanked by, by a child and in actual fact, they can't hear you in that moment. So it's really, really important to go, what's happening underneath? Is their body calm? Are they feeling safe? Are they able to hear me before you judge them and say they're not listening? Um, obviously, that wasn't the sort of thing um, that I could talk to the daycare educator about at that time. Um, but just something to keep in mind if you think that your child isn't listening. Um, so kids that have a stronger reaction to potential threats need more connection, more listening, more compassion. And I really want you to have a think about what's going on underneath for their nervous system. Can they hear me? Not why aren't they listening? And if, if that's the case, then plenty more Batmobiles will be safe and won't end up in the rubbish bin. <laughs> okay, just a little one for you today. See you soon. Bye.